Brand new Giga video dropped and it's called When You Become the Main Character. And looking at the first second here, it's looking like Omniscient Reader, the series that surpasses solo leveling. Well, it's not really the same. They're webtoons, but the comparison is there. Is this the solo leveling killer? Let's see what Giga has to say. This is going to be something special. For yeah. the longest time, anime fans had this rabid obsession with media that came from Japan and only Japan. Animation. Korea, rise up. Korea number one. No, Taiwan number one. But me as a fellow Korean, it is so heartwarming to see these webtoons get translated and get the recognition that it may deserve from a global audience. Not made from the motherland. What do I look like? A cartoon fan? Reading pictures left. There's nothing wrong with cartoons. In fact, check out my second channel, Kaka TV 2 Beyblade Reactions. Cartoons are fucking hype, bro. The right? That's not how you read manga. Then, Korean webtoons blasted onto the up scene. Down. We read up down. Quickly carving its own niche in the international community. Proving to weebs that if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, but quacks like a We'll give it a pass. This yeah. opened the world to a whole new genre of even more powerful webtoons. stories with an OP main character. Ah, oh, thank fucking god. I was getting worried that we're gonna run out of isekai, shitty isekais to farm in this channel, but it's like, nah, hold up, hold up. We got regression. We got power fantasy webtoons. You thought we were done? No, no, no. And this isn't even our final form. When the Chinese cultivation manhwas drop as animes. Oh, oh my god. I'm, a I'm actually pretty interested in how those are gonna do. A lot of people say the cultivation series are pretty shit and that uh, they're so long and terribly paced, but in a proper anime adaptation, wonder what that's actually gonna look like. If you were bored of Isekai, no worries. Just jump over to Korea, where we have regression, reincarnation, tower climbing, and death games. Where Power God! Power of God is also super hyped up right now. We're checking out in this current channel, right? We're watching on kind of like a weekly basis, but yeah. Tower of God also season two coming up pretty soon, yeah? Tower climbing and death games. Where reading through all these allows you to get more brain rot than being a part of the Jujutsu Kaisen fan base, but what if there was a I feel like that was straight up a fucking JJK spoiler manga panel, but it's out of context, so I guess it doesn't matter. Series that takes all these elements from every one of these series you can think of, blends it all together for an unabashed love letter not only for these genres, but for fiction itself. I love what I'm being shady -ish. I'm being shady -ish. A series that could What did you just say? What what was that accent? Genres, but for fiction itself. I love what I'm being shady -ish. I'm being shady -ish. A I love I'm being shadish. I I'm being shadish. I'm being serious? What the fuck accent is that? Series that combines a meta take on every power fantasy trope you can think of. Hunter Hunter style exams, battle royale death games, legendary historical figures from the past, cosmic deities from all global mythology, interdimensional Jesus. eldritch horrors that haunt your nightmares, and finally, Twitch oh, streamers. <laughs> and this, Rage. this is one of the most important aspects of it. Twitch streamers? Omniscient. What? What do you mean? Oh, keep cooking? I'm being serious. So grab your I'm being serious? And fasten that seatbelt, hang on to your knickers, because today we're talking about Omniscient Reader's viewpoint. That was Chris's panties. The art looks really good. It honestly but looks like solo leveling art. Get to that, let me go back. Ah, uh, AFK. No, this is an AFK. You're in a slime mobile game. What is it? Get my roots for a bit and talk about Isekai because one of my favorite Isekai is having a collaboration with today's sponsor, AFK Arena. AFK. I have some things to say about AFK Arena and AFK Journey as a whole. If you guys have played AFK Journey recently because of the massive promos that a lot of content, gotcha content creators are doing, and if you know about the drama that happens. Do what you will. I'm not going to, you know, talk bad about the product, but it's a shame. It's a shame what happened to Journey. Back to the video. Kim Dokja is a nobody. <laughs> Classic. Main character has to be relatable to the, you know, the common audience. So he's a fucking nobody. 28 year old. Graduated from a third rate college and currently employed as a contractor. Not even full time. A contractor at a subsidiary of a large corporation. Not even the main corp. A subsidiary. All right. We're living our regular normie lives. He's a nobody. An average office worker graduating from an average college. Living an average life as a loner. Who's And at least it's not a high school student. You know why you said that? Because... The audience that watches this content has been growing up. Instead of focusing on the main character as a high school student, 
make it a college make it like a fucking working class and you know, someone in their late 20s or 30s right then the people that used to watch this shit are older now and can relate to it's all in they, they know what they're fucking doing only hobby is reading trashy fantasy novels that absolutely no one else reads insert the fucking denji panel here one such novel is the series three ways to survive the apocalypse a web okay. novel with over three thousand chapters one piece fans quake at this man's dedication it's so Except peak this is so underground and but one views so in his previous Giga, uh, there was a trash taste highlights video we reacted to where Giga was talking about Omniscient Reader and how Kim Dokja was the only fan for this series. So there's like 3,000 chapters, but you can see one view. So he's the only supporter of this series. Gone on for so long that Dokja is the only person still reading it. And it Damn. remains that way as he loads up the final chapter and becomes the sole person to reach the end of this novel that he's been following for okay. over a decade. The lights go dark. Oops. The train Sound effects. Crashes. Everyone's screaming. Giga voiceover. Yo, he's got to start doing a bridge series, bro. I like it when he does this. The train is on. Crashes. Ah! Everyone's screaming. Ah! Panic! And Doctor begins to realize that the story of his novel has suddenly become a reality. Monsters Whoa. spawn in the real world. Everyone is forced into a series of death games where these little munchkins set all the rules. The apocalypse has started. Little munchkins set all the rules. There's also a Twitch streamer aspect about it too, but okay, so he knows the entire story and then the story becomes life. So with the knowledge of the 3000 chapters of content, he should be able to find the optimal route out of this. Tokebi? Oh, Tokebi literally means like, um, not a goblin. Tokebi in Korean is kind of like this like, on like small oni-like creature. Kind of like a goblin, oni, hybrid, little, little cute little thing. Apocalypse has started. I say cry. To help everyone get through the games, everyone is given an ability. Hiroyuki Sawano needs to fire the girl that she that, that does the lyrics for every one of his songs and just get you know Giga to voice it. Look at this one, pretty good. The apocalypse. Wait for it. Wait for it. I say cry. To help everyone get through the games, everyone is given an ability, yeah. and for Doctor, of course, he is given a pirated copy of the entire web novel and the ability to read at super fast speeds. Yeah. Everyone gets a cool skill, but he gets a pirated copy of the 3,000 chapters in his smartphone, and he can also read at faster speed. So not just the text on his phone, but reading comprehension in just overall, like outside. Not just this, but everything else. He can just read fast. That's kind of useful, I, I guess. Super fast speeds. Yes, his anime superpower is reading fast. He may not be able to be Gojo, but nah, he's probably read. beat a Jujutsu Kaisen fan. IQ armed with the knowledge of the ensuing apocalypse that a lot of hate for JJK fandom. I love the JJK memes. This isn't even hate. It's just casual banter about how unga boonga, you know, the shonen audience may be. He and only he knows the entire story of Doctor realizes, oh my god. What? I can now be the single most obnoxious light novel reader that's ever existed. <clears throat> Every fucking slime video. Oh my god, these light novel readers coming in, gatekeeping, and just trying to fucking hint and tease like, oh, I'm so smart, I'm gonna leave a little hint here which acts as a spoiler, but fuck you. Oh my god, so fucking cringe. <laughs> stories within stories. There's a plot hook I am an absolute sucker for. Maybe it's because I've made watching stories become my job, but when you watch enough anime, you start to see all the repeated tropes. Yeah. All the recurring cliches. Sometimes you Literally, some shit happens. Oh, Bakana happening in three. Two, one, Bakana! Oh, who would have fucking saw it? Sonna Bakana sometimes! Arienai! You know, if you just watch enough fucking anime, all the tropes, it's just like, yep, that's what's gonna happen next. Start to wonder how you do differently than how the story plays out. Emerson the Shadow. series plays to that fantasy to a T, as Doctor lives the story of his favorite novel and molds the events as he sees fit. You ever watch a movie or TV show and thought to yourself, man, I could solve everyone's problem if I just did this, Doctor yeah. does that. Or maybe there's a major character. That's how I felt in Snafu. My teenage romance. It's like motherfuckers just speak out your honest thoughts and talk to each other. Holy shit, the only reason you're in this fucking drama is because no one fucking says their actual thoughts in their head. But that is the whole point of the story, to have teenagers fucking be awkward and cause romantic friction. That you absolutely despise, but just keeps showing up and you're like, man, fuck this cum stained mouth breathing piece of shit. Can we just remove him from the story already? He 
<laughs> so this is a great boy from My Hero Academia, right? What the fuck is her tongue so long for? Holy shit, she's like a fucking frog. And then Zenitsu, I... Ugh. What does it say about a character when your favorite moment of that character is when he's unconscious? I think it says a fucking lie. Can we just remove him from the story already? He has to go blood. Doctor does that. Are you one of those people who watch videos like how to beat every... <laughs> so, sea dog. What kind of context is this? I'm getting scared at this sea dog picture. What the fuck? You want me to get you in your candy van? Who would watch videos like how to beat every game in Squid Game or how to beat the monster from a quiet place. Doctor probably made those bloody videos because he okay. thinks he can do a better job. Doctor is your average redditor. The world of the novel Three Ways to Survive the Apocalypse doesn't just come alive. The very characters that inhabit the story become a reality, allowing him to game the... The NPCs become real. So... We have the people, obviously, that exist on Earth. In Korea, I guess it's where it's taking place. The world becomes the story. And then side characters also then exist and become sentient. Okay. ...system befriend the characters he knows oh so well, making him only slightly less parasocial than your average K-pop fan, and molds the story in the way he would have gone through the original novel. All right. So... It would be kind of boring if we had all the answers and we do have all the answers. Everything should be so trivial. Well, I read this chapter. I know how this arc ends. So let's just follow that optimal route. But surely the story isn't going to be that easy. Surely they're going to have some kind of twist to the point where Dokja is going to be like, hold on a moment. This is not supposed to happen at this point in the arc. That would be very interesting. Another interesting thing could be if Dokja decided to go against the script. He says, fuck it. Fuck the whatever the narration path is. I'm going to do my own thing. And I feel like this story would have been even better if it went that way. Sometimes a lot of people think that they're better authors than the novelists themselves, right? I ain't going to lie to you. A lot of you are probably going to see these panels and read some early chapters and go, this is just more solo leveling. Let's the art looks incredibly similar. But because solo leveling art did well, why would you not want to copy and customize it and do that, right? It's not copy and paste. You take an existing popular work. Understand what people love about it, take those elements, make it your own, and then it's your own new thing. This is just more solo leveling. Let's go down the checklist. Leveling up system, video yeah. game esque abilities and interface, nice. death games with different clear conditions. A protagonist that is OP because he has prior knowledge of the events that are about to unfold. If this was a Manwa trope exam, it'd be scoring A plus in power fantasy brain rot. But those tropes exist for a reason. People say tropes are bad. I think that tropes become like a buzzword. It's like, oh my god, these tropes again. But why do tropes exist? Because they're proven to be good before. So as long as they have a new innovative way to use those tropes, I think there's no problem with using brain rot power fantasy tropes as long as the execution of the trope is good. But the series takes these cliches you are familiar with and uses it as a springboard to run in all sorts of interesting directions. Cults start to form with a ranking oh, system based cults. on how far people got in the original novels. They fight an isekai Bald? 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 I had to do that? Okay. How far people got in the original novels. They fight an isekai protagonist and he almost wipes the floor with them because he's so OP. Doctor meets the actual main character of the original novels and he's- Right! Because in that Trash Taste Highlights video, this guy on the left is the actual protagonist. He is a side- he's an NPC. No, he's not an NPC, he's an actual character of the book that became real and now they are in some kind of- I could, I feel like a lot of people would make sus art about this, you know? I feel like they would like write yaoi fucking bondage, you know, BDSM shit with this scene alone. No novels, and he's everything you'd expect. He's cool, calm, He's so hot, man. Oh my god. Perfect on the surface in every way. Oh, he's so hot. This isn't fair. When this motherfucker pisses, it's probably in laminar flow. But it turns out from the perspective hydration mm, good guys drink your water you got to drink your water if you drink if you pee and you see yellow it's not a good thing it's got to be clear okay ah, okay let's go to have someone who's not a named character in the original story it's kind of a dick he's ridiculously Is powerful it? because he's a regressor who can respawn at the beginning of the story every time he dies regression story but no no this isn't the regression it's a regression it's a regression for him Stories within a story. You know how Giga has been hyping up regression webtoons? Now it's just like, yes, it's a story, but it's, it's, it's about a regression character. That's interesting. So 
Main character? What? How is this gonna work? He's a fucking asshole. He can like go back in time and repeat the events and main character will try to be, sorry, uh, uh, us, Tokja, will probably try to help the protagonist every time he fails, kind of? He's hey, I talked about regression, man. Wait here if you can't remember. Yeah, yeah, but what that, that means is that he's become this nihilistic arsehole who doesn't care for anyone who can't help him progress further than the last run. And he gives up on the world at the slightest unforeseen obstacle because, well... This is actually pretty realistic, actually, right? Because, like, if you're regressing, that means, like, you got... You, you tried your hardest in that timeline, you failed, and... I don't know what the qualification is to regress. Maybe you die, and it's just, like, you do this over and over. You will just lose your sanity, right? You will become fucking insane. And then you're gonna be like, yeah, worthless, this run's ruined. It's basically speedrunning. You just fucking doing it, so it's like, oh, it's over. Yeah, restart. Oh, what's the point when he can just start all over again? To the point where he gets depression from the disconnect he feels with the world. Interesting. So, after hearing this, Doctor slaps the shit out of him, goes hashtag not my protagonist, Based? and tells him, bro, can we just skip the emo character arc this time? Yeah, the series is meta as hell. And here's the thing. That's pretty vase. Bro, it just slaps us. What if he fucking kills us? Because he's a dick, but we're going to be his therapist. We're going to say, get your shit together, motherfucker. Better anime is something I have a soft spot for, but only in those rare cases that the author actually takes the effort to make something interesting out of it. Most of the time, you just see a quick fourth wall break or a self-referential joke. Tee on each other, look, you didn't fall on my panties. Was that Toka for a second? Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 wait, no, 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 it was not, it was not, but this, this, I want to look at this fucking guy right over here. We just see a quick fourth wall break or a self- What the fuck is that mustache and the yellow afro? What is this character? Did he just defeat them with both mustaches? Straight up, right? Look at it. There's two enemies here. One mustache, it's, it's not even a mustache, it's a single fucking nose hair, bro. It's a long ass fucking nose hair that comes out. <laughs> Anyways, let's go back to the Onichan panty. Referential joke. Tee Onichan, look, you didn't fall on my panties for once. At best, it's like a funny Easter egg, but at worst, it feels like a cheap gimmick. Isekai now Quartet. go and lay it down, and you see something like Bakuman or Shirobako. Stories about creating stories, where you can learn something, but still be invested in the plot of these creators themselves. Then you have your One Punch Mans and oh, Eminence and Shadows. Series that Hype. not only plays its tropes, but embraces everything the genre is about to craft a genuinely entertaining story and world self-contained from anything that it's satirizing. Now, and then people will say, these are the deconstruction of isekais or power fantasy. I, don't, I think deconstruction is so overused that people just lost its meaning. But yeah, it is peak satire, right? One Punch Man is like a huge power fantasy where Baldi just one punches everything. And how is it going to be hype? Well, by focusing on all the supporting side characters and playing the random tropes, but then Saitama comes in and he just doesn't give a fuck. Eminence and Shadow as well embraces the cringe to the point where it became super fucking hype in a trashy isekai that honestly came out amazing. If I were to scale omniscient readers' viewpoint against shows like these, it would land somewhere about here. This series takes the meta narrative. What else was there in the in the pit bull hole in the, in the uh, iceberg? Recreators. Is this recreators down here? Sorry, you guys probably can't see that. You probably can't see, they'll see this. It says something creators, and I think it says re here. Out here. This okay, right? Interesting. I guess that's kind of hinting at what kind of story recreators will be, but uh, Tokja, Omniscient Reader, is going to be way at the bottom of the iceberg here. Here. This series takes the meta narrative and explores it in a depth that I don't think I've ever seen before. With so many wild ideas, I don't even know where to start. Take one of Doctor's most iconic abilities, the fourth wall. On the surface, <laughs> the fourth wall seems like your standard OP ability. Fourth wall? Every one of his abilities is related to like novels reading. He can read fast, he knows the fucking pirated copy, and then he break into fourth wall. It's literally breaking the fourth wall. See that hey is a reference to the fourth wall. <laughs> oh my god, so meta. A power that protects him from shit seemingly no one else in the story is able to block. It stops yeah. even the most powerful, unblockable mental attacks. It shields him from the pain of any injury. It can dampen Damn. his emotions to allow him to distance himself from some of the most horrific. I feel like the main character needs this. The protagonist of the story rather than Tokja because he's so nihilistic and he needs his mentality protected. Big events he witnesses in the world. It's so powerful that even the Dokkebi, the little creatures that are meant to be right. Tokkebi. It's unfair. There's probably a K in there. There is no letter in the Korean letter that has the G sound. The closest in English is K, but that's a K sound. It's Tokkebi. 
but how the fuck are you going to translate that to English, right? Creatures that are meant to be running everything aren't able to bypass fourth wall's protection. Yeah, pretty damn broken. But as he continues to encounter different situations, stuff that never happened in the way they did in the original novel, things start to get weird. Uh -huh. He encounters his old bully from his real past and the wall starts glitching. What the fuck? He meets someone that plays a part in some big traumatic event that happened to him before and it shakes violently. It resonates. So the story is going off script. It's like different shit is happening, not according to script, right? It's with character moments that meant something to him in the original story. And the more oh. the ability begins to act out, the more you begin to realize the fourth wall is his fourth wall. The one that <laughs> separates and protects him from the rules of his perception of this fictional world. So but deep. as the world of fantasy and his reality start to blend together, you see the cracks beginning to form. The fourth wall can't protect him from the real struggles of his life outside. You know what we need? If fourth wall can't do this anymore, anyone following what I'm picking up? We need a fifth wall, baby. The fiction. And that's just fucking cool for a concept while being so on point for the theme of the story because this is a story about a story. stories. Yeah. Not just the power of a story, but the relationship between an author, the reader, and the story being told. I wonder who the author is. Like, going back to the immediate lore of this, right? It all started off of that story, the novelist, right? No one fucking read that shit. Only Tokja did. And then the world became that story. Okay, that's the premise of this, that's the premise of this anime or this webtoon. But, like, who the fuck was the author? This person created this whole system? It has to be, right? Like SAO, fucking Kayaba. You know what I mean? Thank you, Haley, for the tier one sub. I appreciate that. And to do this, it has crafted this insane, intricate world with a system that all comes back to this central idea. Okay, pause for a second. Paused. You're probably confused as to why I mentioned live streamers in the intro and how that yeah, has anything streaming. to do with this story. Well, turns out everything is being live streamed to this cosmic Twitch for the enjoyment of constellations. What are constellations? Well, that's the name for all these deities or historical figures that are watching the live stream. Because, you know, when you're a god, apparently you have nothing better to do than just to watch a subathon run by some celestial Mr. Beast. And I'm not- What? So people can watch- the, what's happening to us it's, a, it's broadcasted to these celestial beings and they're bored as fuck do they donate money? do they sub? do they super chat? do they like you know fucking donate this money alright I want you to fucking kill that guy $2,000 donate it you know like where are they going with this? just to watch a subathon run by some celestial Mr. Beast okay. and I'm not talking about some made up fake characters Greek gods and goddesses are oh like fate you know like Da Vinci and you know King Arthur and all these different historical figures are in, and they are the celestial beings and gods and different heroes and stuff like that's that's pretty interesting premise. So then, okay, how did this even happen? It sounds like the gods just were bored and made this world. And the gods appreciated the 3,000 ways to die. Whatever the, um, the original story, the novel is called, right? The gods must have a play in this because it's being fucking broadcasted live. Unless, like, in the context of a stream... This is one stream that they're watching. There could be multiple other streams that they also watch, right? So maybe the gods are not involved in this. And someone else did this and offered to the gods, like, Hey, look at this new channel, man! This, it's fucking good! Come on, watch this shit! It could be like that, too. This is getting pretty intricate. Archangel Uriel, Christopher Columbus. These are actual figures from our own history and mythology. If I had to make a comparison, I'd say it's kind of reminiscent of... Fate. Drifters. But instead of summoning these Baited. heroic spirits to Earth to battle it out like in Drifters, they can Baited. shower their favorite contestants. <laughs> Baited twice! Like, where's my fate references? With subs and donos so they can use the in-game currency to buy better equipment and resources. Bald! Receding. So they donate money, they sub, and that currency comes to- So they must have their favorite characters. Like whoever wants to like, let's say, support Tokja. It's like, you know what? I feel like this character is pretty good. I'm gonna fucking put like a thousand dollars into this guy and then he gets money and then he can like buy shit with it. And then they're kind of like, they're pretty much just like our patrons, right? They're like our sponsors kind of deal, right? So the gods pick a character, give money, and then they're like, I feel like you can go all the way or something. Can we say fuck you? I don't know. 
Because, like, there is this, like, parasocial thing. Like, this is getting very parasocial with the gods. It's like, the gods makes you want to do something. And sometimes streamers will be like, listen, you can't fucking pay me money to have this fucking relation, this weird parasocial thing. Like, fuck you, I deny. That kind of thing. Like, how far are they willing to go with, like, the Twitch streaming meta? It goes so far that people can bargain exclusive stream and sponsor contracts that allow contestants to inherit special abilities of whatever <laughs> constellation they're ridiculous. in a contract. Do the gods, like, possess us? Like, a fucking, I don't know, great warrior fucking, I don't know, fucking... What, What's, what's his name? Uh, Genghis Khan decided to sponsor me. And then fucking Genghis Khan, I get, I get all of his Geng Genghis Khan's abilities? Like, how does that work? Why is this even relevant? Stories. The power of a story is the power system in this world. Whether it be these constellations wanting to sponsor someone so okay. they can have their story represented, or someone building a powerful that story themselves sick. to get recognized by all these celestial beings. And your abilities are tied to the power of the stories you create, or the stories you choose to take on. This is That's like a key drama now. Everyone has a story. Uh, yeah, okay. what she said. I went to the convenience store today because I was craving fried chicken. Nice. They were out. That's a story, not a... That is so... Actually, I was gonna say, like, that's so lucky that he can just waltz into a fucking convenience store and get prime fried chicken. But he's not in Japan. Where does Gigguk live? I probably shouldn't ask that question. Anyways, moral of the story. The convenience stores in my area of 7-Eleven Canada. It fucking sucks, bro. I was craving fried chicken. They were out. That's a story, not a powerful one, unless, of course, you know okay. the pain of being deprived delicious Lawson's fried chicken. What okay. is it that makes a good story? How do you craft something that will resonate deeply with an audience? Um, have characters that people can relate to in an emotional level and have them root for them. That's how you compel an audience, or that's the most basic way. And what if your strength was correlated to the strength of your own personal story? Will exactly. your story include some grand empathy, historical feats, right? You can relate. Sea battle, or will it become the stuff of legends passed down through generations, eventually Jojo. transforming into something mythical? Lord of the Rings. It's a system based on anything and everything you've ever seen in fiction. And if that's not one of the coolest concepts for a power system you've ever heard of, I don't know. Go back to doing sign language with Naruto or some shit. Now I've just... <laughs> Naruto doesn't deserve this? Yo, Zabuza versus Kakashi was hype! Zabuza and Kakashi and then the whole thing with Haku and... The Naruto going all out after Sasuke sacrificed himself with the needles and Naruto Jinchuriki keep fucking QB comes up. Do you desire power? And it's like, and then 14 year old me is like, ah, oh, this is peak! But that's 14 year old me without any understanding of what a good story is. I just see it and I'm like, oh, power fantasy. But I guess, you know, as you grow up and you get more used to what good writing should be, Naruto's trash? Is that what he's saying? language with Naruto or some shit. Now I've just spent over 11 yeah. minutes. Thank you, Alan, trying to convince you that Omniscient Reader is different. It's not like other pal fantasy manhwa. And I'm here to tell you, it's not. Okay. For a very long time. Credit where credit is due. Meaning other series will copy this show then. And then, you know, we get the fucking human centipede thing going again with just, you know, people taking popular shit and regurgitating over and over. And then you get the... Anime trashy isekai industry. Doctor is far more likable than your typical bland, self insert, overpowered protagonist. He has great chemistry with the various cast members, but cool. for a very long stretch of the series, it tries to present you with the idea that he's just an ordinary dude, an underdog, overshadowed by the actual protagonist of the novel. He's just like you. Honestly, you can't say he's just like you because, like, okay, let's say 28 years old, contractor work at a subsidiary at a big corporation. That sounds actually very relatable to a lot of the, uh, uh, college graduates in Korea, like the most like kind of like average, you're not going to Samsung, you know, in Korea, it's like, it's Samsung or nothing. Basically, the, the Chebar families, right? It's Samsung or nothing. And if it's not Samsung, you got to get to LG. If it's not LG, then you got to get to Hyundai. I think that's the, oh, the SK, SK. Hyundai doesn't really do that much, but SK, Hyundai, Samsung. Anyway, these are like the big four fucking companies. There's, there's more of it. If you don't get to those, then you'd end up in a shitty ass company like this. And you're kind of shunned from society and no one wants to talk to you because you're not popular. But he's pretty fucking good looking, man. You for real? Yeah, we can clearly see that he's really smart, charismatic, a natural leader who knows the solution to every problem and to what the scenarios throw at him. One of the running jokes to keep him grounded is that everyone thinks he's just really ugly and bro, if this dude is meant to be ugly, I might as well- The beauty standards is insane. It's kind of like the rom-com in Japanese uh, animes, right? Where the main character is like a piece of shit, neat, unpopular, not smart, not athletic, has no friends, is an introvert, does fucking nothing with his life, but is actually really good looking. 
And then a most popular girl comes and, you know, reaches out to you. Why? Because they're trying to pander the characteristics of a degenerate audience that, you know, they're selling the product to. So that you guys can fucking relate to it, but... It looks that we need to have a fucking ugly main character. But if you have ugly main characters, you know, it's, it's, it, people like, you know, people judge things by the cover of the book. You know, you, you got to make him look good. Commit Alt F4 in my life right now, because what fucking hope do I have? It takes. Giga, bro, you don't need to be good looking. I think you're pretty good looking. You got fucking how many subs, bro? 3.59 mil subs. Bro, got the best fucking podcast. He's known as Mr. Anime. Got a wife. Bro's fucking living the dream, bro. What fucking hope do I have? It takes quite a bit of commitment before the series even starts to show its hand. We are 200 odd chapters in right now, and only recently have some of these characters been put in interesting situations that challenge their worldview, or had bombshell revelations that give us an insight behind what makes these characters tick. And yet, all this time, I feel like we are just at the start. This Ooh. is a series based on a completed web novel with 551 chapters, and we <sighs> are just about to- It's- it's done. It's completed. How many anime seasons can we get with this? Oh, oh, we could like, this could be like the ReZero of fucking, you know, webtoons or something. How long is ReZero at? Three seasons, right? Then it's keep going. ReZero is complete, right? Like we could have a lot of fucking seasons. And Soul Leveling, the Soul Leveling is also complete too, right? Dude, the era of webtoon animes is upon us. Tower of God too, by the way. Tower of God. If only they go back and do High School of the, you know, not, uh, not High School of the Dead. High school, God of High School. I heard that show was actually really bad, but there's a lot of potential and it didn't really do it justice. I don't know. There's also another, a lot of other webtoon shows that people recommend to me, like um, Unordinary. There's also, uh, on the top of my head, I, I actually can't name them, but I can't read them. I gotta wait for it to get animated so I can do a blind reaction, okay? A third of the way through of the story and have yet to fully get into the meat of it. Every novel reader I've seen has said it only continues to get better, wilder, paying off all the characters and systems to elevate it to a whole new level. And while the last thing I want to do is make smug novel readers feel more superior than they already do. Sisty! Sisty! Uh, she oh, this is actually a viral meme, right? In, in, uh, we're watching Akashic Records right now. And uh, Sisti, the T, the T face. Uh, everyone was saying, um, you know, oh, that's the fucking meme. I didn't get it because I've like seen the T face so much, but th she, or she's like the origin of it, huh? Okay. The series has shown enough shades of greatness, set the foundation for so many interesting things that I'm actually inclined to believe them. But as for right now, to me, Omniscient Reader's viewpoint has just been the ultimate love letter for the genre I can't seem to get away from. An amalgamation nice. of all your isekais, regressions, death games, power fantasy stories that so many people write off, but with a drive to try and do so much more. And if you have the patience, my gut is telling Bald. you that we're witnessing a series that is about to evolve into something truly special. Mm. Or I'm wrong, and we just get cool OP man kicking ass with fantastic art and cool action. And that's so fine with me, baby. But every time Giga glazes a fucking show, like solo leveling, it's done fucking wonders for me. So I'm here for the fucking bandwagon, baby. But I promise I will give you the best reactions I can. That's win win in my books. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. I did. Thank you very much this month too. Author cut. Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Giguk a like on the video. Sub to his channel if you haven't. It's always good to support these small up and coming anime channels. He's only at 3.59 million, you know, subs, but with your help, maybe we can get to 4 mil. Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint has been a series that's been really hyped up even before solo leveling ended on my channel. People have been talking so much about it, and I'm very excited to cover it. We've seen... It, there is kind of... It's inevitable that you will get spoiled. I feel like the context that he mentioned, yes, I kind of know more about the story than I should, but I think it's also nice to kind of, you know, talk about the series in the, in the community and get everyone hyped up so when it launches, then everyone can enjoy it, and hopefully y'all can check out the reactions. That's it from me. Bye-bye.